Hello and welcome to Coast Watch. I'm Priscilla and this is Ralph. Over this series of programmes, we are going to tell you more about the Sefton Coast and the changes which are affecting it. In particular, the threat of climate change and how it may affect you as a resident of Sefton. The Sefton Coast is changing. It always has and always will. Many of these changes are natural, but over the centuries humans have also had impacts in a range of ways, both positive and negative. Let's begin by finding out the basics about our local coastline. The Sefton coast is in northwest England, between the city of Liverpool and the seaside town of Southport. It is curved in shape and lies between the River Mersey and the River Ribble. It is an extremely important section of coastline as it contains 20% of the sand dunes in England, which provide a valuable home to a number of rare animal and plant species, such as the natterjack toad, sand lizard, red squirrel, migrating birds and rare wildflowers. 22 miles or 35 kilometres long, the Sefton coastline is made up of mainly soft sand, which can be moulded easily by the forces of nature such as tides and wind. Until the 1900s, the coast was growing in area and extending out into the Irish Sea. We call this accretion. However, since the 1900s, some areas of the coastline began to move inland due to changes in wind and wave direction. We call this erosion, and this has had a dramatic effect on the formation of Formby Point. Sand dunes have built up along the Sefton coast over the last 4,000 years, and they defend the coast from the sea. The sand dunes in Formby are now being eroded by up to 4 metres per year, damaging their ability to act as a natural sea defence. The sand that is taken away from Formby Point is transported northwards to Southport and southwards to Crosby, where it is deposited onto the beaches by the sea. This additional sand has allowed more land to be reclaimed from the sea in Southport and Crosby, but we still need to protect it with sea walls. On rare occasions, a severe storm could still come over the seawall and cause flooding, and with the threat of climate change, this could happen more frequently. The Sefton coast looks very different today, due to these constant natural and man-made changes, and will continue to change into the future. Let's go over to Sydney the Squirrel our roving reporter and local resident on the scene, to find out more about how our coastline has changed over time. Here I am on Lord Street in Southport. Back in 1736, this is where the coastline came to, meaning much of Southport as we know it today was covered by sand dunes. In the early 1900s, the sea began to retreat and Southport was developed as a Victorian bathing resort using land reclaimed from the sea. In 1835, a promenade and seawall was built to protect the sea from hotels, from blowing sand, the tide and storms. But the sea retreated even further, which allowed the height of the beach to rise and more land was reclaimed in stages. In 1860, the pier was constructed, followed by Marine Lake in 1887, with the Marine Drive Highway being built in 1894. Up until 1997, Marine Drive was often flooded, causing a great amount of damage to the leisure areas behind the road. Therefore, a new seawall and promenade was built in 2002. Other parts of the Southport coastline are protected by salt marsh, which acts as a natural sea defence. The salt marsh reduces the energy of the waves as the sea passes over it. I've travelled south to Formby now. The sand dunes here began to develop 4,000 years ago. Before the dunes were formed, Formby's landscape consisted of freshwater lagoons and marshland, home to hunter-gatherers who hunted deer and cattle, such as red deer and auroch. Evidence of their settlements and activities can sometimes be found on the beach in the form of ancient footprints exposed on the beach in muddy deposits after high tides. Since 1909, the Formby coastline has been eroding, meaning a lifeboat station, promenade, seafront cafe, caravan park and a car park have all been lost to the sea. Evidence of these can still be seen on the beach in the form of rubble foundations. Nicotine waste from the Liverpool Tobacco Company, dumped in the 1950s, can also be found here in the form of nicotine cliffs, which form a very different landscape within the dunes. Formby is the most vulnerable section of our coastline due to its high rates of erosion. 
with the expected climate change impacts on sea level rise and the increased storminess, we are in danger of losing even more of our existing coastline. Here I am in Crosby, right at the southern end of the Sefton coastline. You may have visited here to see the famous Anthony Gormley and other place statues. The seawall here was built in 1972 to reclaim the land from the sea. This land is now home to new developments such as Crosby Marine Coastal Park. Erosion is not so much of a problem here as the sand, which is eroded by Formby, is deposited here by the sea. However, sand dunes are now forming in front of the seawall and blowing across the seawall, making access difficult. So that's my tour of Sefton Coast and how it's changed over time. Now back to the studio. So, as you can see, the Sefton Coast is always reacting to change, both natural and man-made, to try and reach its own balance. Add to this the expected upcoming influences of climate change and we face an uncertain future here, as you will see in our next shows. Thank you.